Hi everybody. Uh, so right now I'm going to do my seventh reflection and uh, I'll be talking about Buber's theory of dialogue and how that kind of applies to my work with Django. So Buber's theory of dialogue attempts to define what it means to be a human in the modern era. Uh, and he does this by focusing on a human's relationship with God. And he focuses specifically on how it's a very intense and a very personal individual thing and that it's not going to be replicated from person to person, meaning that, you know, there's going to be, there's no single definition to anything because uh, how humans make sense of the world is through their experiences. They communicate their experiences and their understanding of experiences to other humans and that, uh, and that conversation and dialogue helps to, you know, generate new understandings and new perspectives. Uh, and so in Django, there's no direct mentions of God, but Schultz and Django definitely display a healthy relationship uh, by uh, mindfully walking Buber's narrow ridge. And the narrow ridge is basically Buber's way of saying that in order to actively communicate you need to act on your own self-interest but at the same time the narrow ridge is when you're in a dialogue with another person you need to grant them the same respect so even though you might think that you know something better than somebody else does that does not mean that they don't have anything worthwhile to contribute and we see this a lot in Django uh, especially from the beginning scene when Django is brought into the bar with Dr. Schultz for the first time they're not friends yet, and uh, so they're waiting for the marshal, uh, and Django is very confused, and Dr. Schultz explains to him that, you know, hey, I, I need your help. I'm a bounty hunter, uh, and I need you to identify the Brill brothers to me, and I'll pay you money to do that. And so in this conversation, he's very frank with Django, and he explains... Dr. Schultz's view of the world as a bounty hunter through terms that Django doesn't always understand. But rather than uh, an I-it conversation, which uh, Boomer says is, you know, when you have a conversation with someone and you are not treating them with the same respect uh, as an I-thou relationship, I say that theirs is an I-thou relationship because Schultz is dependent on Django just as much as Django is dependent on Schultz. Uh, without Django's, you know, lived experiences and personal knowledge of what the Brittle brothers look like, there would be no plot. They wouldn't have anything to work on together. So he's forced to work with them. Uh, and Schultz also gives Django the opportunity to dress himself and create his own costume. And that's kind of new because that's kind of introducing a whole new world experience to Django. You know, Django doesn't know that. Uh, he's never had nice clothes before. He's always seen in rags or blankets or nothing. He doesn't have a coat in the beginning. He takes a coat off a dead guy because he doesn't have anything. And now he is interpreting the world through Schultz's vision, which, you know, is, hey, I kill people, I go on adventures, and I get money for corpses. Uh, and that's a pretty interesting uh, dynamic that continues throughout the movie and so even though now I'm not talking about ethics in this paper at all because you know that's a whole other issue if you know a uh, bounty hunter is a ethical way to uh, live life but I'm focusing specifically on the friendship and I don't think that friendships are really based on ethics because you know criminals can make friends with other criminals so uh, I will continue considering uh, this I-Thou relationship throughout the movie, and I think that there's a lot to work with here, and uh, I'm excited to continue working on that in my final draft. All right, take care, everybody. Have a nice day.